Well, healthcare workers on the front lines of the COVID-19 battle are indeed heroes. But many Hoosiers are quietly supporting healthcare behind the scenes. Employees at Noblesville-based Helmer Scientific are working at a feverish pace to produce medical-grade refrigerators, now in higher demand than ever before. Business of Health reporter Kylie Valletta joins us now uh, with more. Kylie. And that's right, Gary. The company says every hospital in the U.S. and Canada, well over 5,000, use some piece of Helmer scientific equipment, all of which is manufactured at its facility in Noblesville. Chief Executive Officer Bruce King says the medical grade refrigerators and freezers are saving lives the day they arrive to the customer. He joins me now via Skype to tell us how the company is keeping pace with emergency demand. Bruce, thanks for joining me today on the show. Happy to be here, Kylie. Thanks for having me. Sure. So we talked a little bit beforehand how Helmer is absolutely overflowing with emergency orders right now. Uh, tell us uh, what's in highest demand and uh, how that equipment is being used in hospitals around the country right now. Sure. Uh, right now, you know, recent waves, the, the first month or so of this crisis have been mostly associated with uh, hospital systems trying to expand rapidly their capacity. Uh, to handle handle this surge. And uh, so we've gotten waves of orders, especially for our medication refrigerators. Uh, those are standalone refrigerators, but also a system that we have that integrates with BD Pixis machines, which is a medication management system. So it's sort of a high tech system that, that uh, stores uh, ambient and refrigerated now um, medications. But uh, our refrigerators have mostly been used during this wave for um, customers from, we got a wave from Italy and then Seattle, New York City, and yes, central Indiana. And uh, now states like Alabama are responding to increase their demand for these products. How they're using them is mostly um, some very temperature sensitive medications, uh, some, some medications they use to intubate patients for, to put on ventilators uh, require this specialized equipment and um, some antivirals. And now there's therapies emerging that, that may need some of our equipment as well. All right, we're going to talk about some of those uh, therapies shortly. Uh, about 340 40 employees uh, there at your Noblesville facility and uh, really seem to me to be unsung heroes right now, uh, really supporting uh, healthcare workers on the front lines. Uh, share your feelings just about um, how your employees are uh, dealing with this crisis and how your company is responding. Well, you, you said it, we support heroes. Uh, our customers are frontline health workers right now and all the people that support them in health systems and places like health departments, like the Indiana Health Department. And, um, you know, really their mission is our mission, so their pressure is our pressure too right now. And so, um, you know, we didn't have a have an option to shut down or anything like that. We have to keep going. So um, to try and keep all these, you know, I, I've just been... Uh, I've been thrilled with the work we've been able to do, and I'm so proud of our team for responding the way we have. Frankly, you know, the, people doing work like this, and especially healthcare workers on the front line, those are the heroes. Uh, you know, not grandstanding politicians or blame-storming politicians or even well-intentioned CEOs like me. I'm really glad you're, you're letting me uh, recognize our team and, and health workers on this. Thank you. Sure. And you mentioned uh, your office staff is now working from home, but your production line obviously can't work from home. So at the same time that you're being met with this huge increase in demand, you had to completely retool your uh, production line. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's been nerve wracking to say the least. Uh, to have to respond to a wave of demand like this all while having to unprecedented ways that we have to work to, uh, to keep people distanced and uh, promote new levels of cleanliness. Wow. It's uh, most of the, you know, we followed the, the, the uh, guidelines of the CDC and the health departments, but it's necessitated us to occasionally, you know, stop things. We, we shut our, our whole plant down for a period of time very rapidly, get all the engineers and all of us leaders in to uh, help redesign the work so that it wasn't so hard to keep our assembly workers and our fabrication workers um, uh, distant. And, um, you know, we added things like sneeze guards, look like sneeze guards into our operation. And, you know, we, we'd love to gown them up and put them in N95 masks, but you know, those are really at the front end of this this uh, crisis. We donated all those to health workers, 
Um, so we had to, we really have to rely on, on distancing and, and uh, that, that's what we focused on. I know you mentioned that now uh, your staff is a little bit short on those masks. Um, just a few seconds left, but tell us the role that Helmer is going to play in this moving forward, both the near term, but also um, some of these long term solutions that are being looked at. Yeah, after this wave that we talked about subsides, I think in the very near term, there's multiple therapies that are being uh, tested now. And some of those might be injectables or uh, other types of medications that'll need our refrigeration equipment, but others are likely have to do with plasma, uh, blood plasma. And we're a blood banking company, equipment company too. So likely some of these convalescent uh, serum therapies that have to do with blood plasma will utilize some of our freezers and uh, refrigerators and, and blood plasma THARs. But further down the road in 12 to 18 months, when we all hope one of the um, one of the pathways for a vaccine comes through, um, then we're really going to have to step up because back in 2009, when the H1N1 crisis hit, uh, they you know the needs for vaccine storage equipment and management equipment that we produce went up dramatically, and those units that's been 11 years now. So I know that our health system customers are going to have to gear up to to administer. 300 million vaccines when that time comes, and we have to be ready to support them. All right, Bruce, really critical work uh, up there in Noblesville. A pat on your back to you and your company for all the hard work you're putting in. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. It's about the people doing the work, so thank you for letting me highlight them. No problem. Back to you.